Namaste, my friend. How are you doing? Your last message about the story of a donkey. I believe it is going inside your head, intellect. And once it goes into the intellect, you have a right knowledge and that prevents the mind. That prevents the mind to continue with the same impulsive, instinctive behavior. It is the mind that reminds you of problems, pain, fear, past impressions. The intellect, and you are wise. Another part, it, it is a common sense understanding and a knowledge. What is that? The intellect perceives, knows in experiences, the tying and untying of the donkey to the tree is fake. But the mind does not believe it. Because of our past impression, because of our past habit, because of our past thought. So every time we are going for higher and higher journey, We want suffering must come to an end once and for all. That is the journey of the Eastern wisdom. I think from the very first session, that is what we are learning together. And that suffering means I want to bring an end to the suffering from the fear, insecurity, uh, mental thought pattern that returns to the past, puts me into anxiety and duality and a conflict. So that comes from the mind. We are understanding from the intellect. What question is coming to your mind? So from today's session, again, we are going a little deeper. I'm asking you to think, think and think. So the, if I ask you a question, you never ask the mind to have these thoughts that causes the anxiety, duality, fear, from where it is coming. Now it is coming from the past. But why it is coming from the past when I don't want it? Ask yourself. So when you start thinking in this way, the moment you have any negative thought, anxiety, duality, and a conflict, please ask. Don't take it for granted that you are tied I'm reminding you the story of a donkey. So when we start thinking over the anxiety or the stress or the pain, that is one way. The other way, let me find out from where it has come. Uh, modern science gives you a lot of answers. But we say it is because the mind is still living with the animal tendency. It is the animal mind. Again, ask the question, how come that we all have, we all have, including me, you, we all have animal mind. We are evolved from animal beings. 
so the animal mind is. Ask yourself the way you ask questions in your profession. You correct your create a balance sheet, do the accounting same way. Do the accounting of your mind, auditing of your mind. If you don't do the auditing and you take it for granted, no, I cannot match the balance and accounting, then you are not a professional. Coming back to the animal mind, this animal mind, especially in the mammals and all living species, this animal mind is always identified with the body. And the body is constantly changing. So to lose the body, there is always a fear. There is always an impulse for insecurity. Even though we as a human being know that, intellect knows that we are not the body, but the mind takes over. And when the mind takes over, then there is no end to the problem. Mind is the cause of the problem. So what we are learning, can you teach and educate your pet that you have in your home? Any pet that, come on, you are not the body, you need not to be scared, you cannot teach. Why? Today's session is all about question and answer. You should ask these questions instantly the moment you have any challenges, problems in your life. Why? You have already done a lot of practices. Now this knowledge in the intellect should take over the mind. The mind contains the behavior and attitude instantly. So our question is, how can, why we cannot educate the animal so that we can get some idea about our mind? Even we know everything, we have the right knowledge, the mind enters, it becomes impulsive, it becomes habitual, it shows its instinct, and we fall back into the anxiety and the stress. Are you understanding? That is why we are understanding. Understanding means knowledge. Knowledge means clarity. What is the clarity? Clarity. Here is neighbor's home, here is mine. There you are, here I am, means classifying, filtering. What is filtering? Apply this in the form of, now I have a tension. Let me understand it. From where the tension comes? Oh, it is coming from the mind. What my intellect says, this is my essential nature. This is the right way to think. Go back. I'm explaining the same. The fifth donkey is tied without leash. So the mind ties itself with the tension. But it is a fake tying. But we want to know the answer that why do animals cannot separate themselves from the body. And that is the reason, you see, that every animal, fear, insecurities, for instincts, is there. They cannot think, they cannot separate. Are you getting an answer? Can you answer yourself why? 
animals have a low level of self-awareness. They are they may be very intelligent, but they do not have an intellect that can think freely, observe, make a choice. We should be grateful to the existence every day when you wake up in the morning. We don't have a choice. We did not have a choice to be born as a human being. I didn't know. But because I'm born as a human being, I have a higher level of self-awareness. I have an intellect. The intellect can think, get the right knowledge to get rid of the fear of insecurity, anxiety, duality, conflict. Animals are conditioned. Why we chose that topic? Knowledge in the intellect is one thing. Behavior through the mind is second thing. And then behavior is influenced by our instinct, impulse, fear, insecurity. That causes the problem in our day-to-day -day life. Are you getting it? So there are two things, my friend, knowledge in the intellect. And we have been learning knowledge in the intellect and behavior in the mind. Mind, emotional, feeling, carried away by the experience. Intellect says, hold on, let me understand. So when the intellect takes over the mind, the journey is going to be complete. We need a clarity, understanding. It doesn't mean that you should not continue the practice. But in the practice also, if the knowledge is intact, you can change in one day. So what is the puzzle that we want to solve in between the intellect and the mind? We want the mind must follow the intellect. Why? If the intellect follows the mind, the intellect forgets the knowledge, and then we start living in fear, insecurity, pain, and suffering. <laughs> Do you understand it clearly? So next question may arise in your mind. What should you do? What should we do? We should learn, gain, right knowledge. And that is why we have been working weekly. And that is very important. In Eastern wisdom, it is known as company of a teacher who passes on the knowledge of the Eastern wisdom to discover our real nature. The mind forgets every time, even though there are tremendous changes that you have told me. So that is why we are continuing the journey until the knowledge is settled in the intellect and it perceives, it has a right perception. Go back again, what is the right perception? That donkey mind is not tied. I have to see it with knowledge inside the head. I'm not tied to anxiety, I'm not tied to duality, I'm not tied to past impression. Are you getting it? We started the journey, understanding the knowledge and the behavior. So knowledge in the intellect, behavior in the mind, 
we have to bridge the gap between the intellect and the mind. In one way, you can see that is what the Namaste Mudra is. That we will talk later. Now see what happens. The mind by default says, I am the body. Intellect says, you are not. Then the mind takes over the intellect when you feel the pain, when you are anxious, when you recall the past. Mind by default is habitual. It relives with the past impression and it gives you pain and the suffering. What is the next question coming to your mind? You have learned everything clearly. If the next question is, who am I? What is my real nature? And once you remember what is your real nature, which is permanent peace, happiness, love, and wisdom, the moment mind says, goes back to the past impression and gives you feeling of tension and stress and fear and security. Intellect takes over the mind. That is why we are together. You see how the entire journey is to transform the mind. So when you transform the mind, transformation, pay attention to each word. Transformation means now the mind has reached to that state where it cannot return back to old things old thoughts, old experiences. Are you clear about the transformation? That is why we are together. We are learning again and again until the knowledge settles, practice is done. We will awaken to the self. We, you will experience yourself. Now, this is totally irreversible process. You, it's all a matter of Perception, again, I'm giving an example of the right perception. Donkey mind cannot see that it is tied to a real leash. That is a human being. My intellect knows that the washerman is simply acting in order to show to the donkey that he is tying a leash to the tree so that donkey cannot move. Now apply this understanding. You have to become aware instantly. Mind says, I am in tension. What should be your right question at that moment? Instead of falling down with those tension. Take an example. You are dreaming. Tiger is chasing you. You are sweating. And you are totally scared in dream. Your mind says, now tiger is going to catch your neck. In a split of second, you open your eyes. You are in a waking state. Tiger is gone. Fear is gone. Think of it. You have to start thinking the way the masters are thinking. I'm just talking. I'm passing on the wisdom to you. Are you getting it? We have to start thinking the masters the way the masters are thinking so that we can discover our real nature.
what the mind says to you. If the mind says, no, I have an independent way of thinking. Okay, you have an accounting and audit auditing profession and you start thinking of physics because you are independently thinking. <laughs> what will happen? <laughs> you will not gain expertise in accounting. But many people come to me, they no, 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 I have an independent way of, who says you don't have an independent way of thinking? But the thinking should be disciplined, why it should be disciplined, so we get the right knowledge, why to get the right knowledge, to bring an end to the suffering. Why? Because the knowledge removes the ignorance. What is ignorance? I do not understand who am I. Self-disciplined thinking, disciplined thinking. You are still thinking independently, but keep your focus on the destination. Why I'm talking of this? Because anytime you are surrounded by the problems, you write to me that you're doing the best thing. Every time you have any challenge, just write to me so I give you a tip, make you aware. Go back, do the same thing. The moment your mind starts thinking you already have a right knowledge, mind is, mind pushes you to think with the reference to the past impression because you are independent. So what our masters are saying, yes, you remain independent, but change your thought pattern. I gave you the second example. A man went to his house sitting with his wife and started drinking vodka. One pack, two pack, three pack. He loses his level of awareness from the higher to the lower, to the lowest. After five pack, he identifies with the body, donkey mind, animal mind. Now that animal mind is asking his wife, please help me to go to my home. Beautiful lady, I told you this story. Now, lower level of awareness. That feels I'm identified with the body, but I forget my real nature. I'm already inside my home and I'm asking my own wife or my honey to take me to my home. This is the entire process of fear, anxiety, duality, conflict. It takes birth in the mind, it progresses because of lower self. So what happens when you start thinking in a disciplined manner with these principles in your head regularly and also when the mind enters into any kind of challenges, problem, pain and the suffering? That intellect changes your perception there and then. Perception change means your thought changes, your feeling changes. Eastern wisdom is the most powerful tradition that changes our perception, our personality, our attitude, our behavior. You're doing the practice, continue doing the practice.
what we are doing in this session, we are getting the knowledge. Knowledge means understanding. Understanding means clarity. Clarity means classifying. Oh, that is neighbor's home. This is my home. There is you. Here is me. You know, classifying. Why I said so? Classifying. Anxiety, you are here. Here I am. Here is fear. Separate from me, not me. Here is me. <laughs> Only that understanding is required. And if that understanding lives, intellect is always available. If we allow to make it available all the time, the moment you wake up until you retire to the bed, Oh, our intellect is always available, isn't it? You have a desire to drink a cup of tea. You go to the kitchen. You don't go to the restroom. This is what the clarity is. Are you getting it? I'm making it more personal so that it should, it should help your intellect to grasp it. And when the intellect has a clarity, it, you take over the mind. Behavior changes there and then. Clarity. Again, understand and apply that. I have a desire to have a cup of tea. I go to the kitchen. I don't go to the bedroom. So you classified it. Not in the living room, but to the kitchen. Not the bedroom, but to the kitchen. I have fear and anxiety. Peace is my essential nature. I should go. Intellect should think. Peace and happiness is my essential nature. How dare you came to me? Now see the opposite way. I start thinking about them. I create a chain reaction. And after some time, the same knowledge takes over, and <laughs> you send the good email to me. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Whenever you are free, you have some time, start thinking about these examples. Or imagine that you are, ask your mind to be like a mirror. You are in front of a mirror. Mirror shows your image of the body. You leave the mirror, image is gone. That should be the nature of the mind. That is, in fact, the natural state of the mind. Mind is like a mirror. So when you have that clarity in the intellect, that the mind is like a mirror, any fear enters, allow the intellect, put the intellect into service. Because every fear belongs to the past, with identification with the body. And it is unknown. You don't have a fear of the known. Are you getting it? From today's, we are going still deeper so that our intellect enlivens the mind. Intellect pushes the mind. The intellect do not approve and accept the conditioned behavior, attitude, and thoughts that enters into the mind. And I know you can do it. Let me explain to you 
another fundamental cause of our fear, suffering, pain, returning of the past, impression, anxiety, according to the Eastern wisdom. That is what we say, ignorance. But ignorance that I am not understanding who am I. One thing. Second thing, I have an incomplete understanding. And I feel I am incomplete. Incomplete means I have many parts. So when the mind returns with the anxiety, feeling fear and the suffering, I feel this is one part I'm still feeling incomplete. It's one of the most famous stories explaining the cause of ignorance, feeling the sense of incompleteness. Never forget it and remind yourself of this story so that you will realize that the mind taking mind is taking you to ignorance, the incomplete knowledge, that is the cause of the fear, suffering. <clears throat> so that famous story is about elephant and the six blind men living in a village. So all the villagers used to help all these blind, sex blind men to conceptualize and understand the different objects, animals, etc., etc. So these six blind men heard about an elephant and wanted to feel it. They are blind. Mind makes us blind. At a different level, it aligns with the story of the washerman and the donkey. So all the villagers took these six blind men to an elephant. And they said, come on, now touch and find out what elephant looks like, feels like. Now see that, I don't know. So the first blind man touched the side of a huge elephant. Side, so maybe you can say, uh, the valley, etc. So he felt it. An elephant is smooth and solid like a wall. It must be very powerful. Second blind man put his hand on the elephant trunk. An elephant is like a giant snake. Third blind man fell the elephant's tusk. Oh, I know. This is a creature very sharp and deadly as the spear. See that? Perception. My perception. Partial perception. Incomplete perception. Your nature is not anxiety, fear, etc. It can never be. Once we have the right knowledge and a perception, anyhow, the fourth blind man touched the elephant four legs. Oh, what we have here? It's an extremely large cow. Well, my conception. My conception.
I hate to see and even my client, all our students and friends. The fifth blind man felt, touched the ear. I believe an elephant is like a huge fan, maybe a magic carpet that can fly over the mountains and treetops. And the sixth blind man gave a tug on the elephant's coarse tail. Why, this is nothing more than a piece of old rope. Dangerous indeed. That is the way the mind perceives partially. That is the way the mind perceives partially. I'm stressing that, please. You start thinking. The moment you have any challenge, fear, anxiety, duality, the mind is thinking partially. I have to ask the intellect. Put the intellect into the service and start thinking, change the direction of the thinking. Anyhow, these six blind men, then they sat together and they start having their opinion, misjudgment, misunderstanding, incomplete knowledge, and they all started fighting against each other. Oh, it's like a wall, it's like a spear, it's like a giant cow, it's like a magic carpet, it's like ah, oh, like a rope, etc., etc. And they started crying, wall, snake, spear, cow, carpet, rope. Anxiety, stress, duality, conflict. <laughs> Until I stop this mind and allow the intellect to think, do you think it will happen, that anything will happen? Wall, snake, spear, cow, carpet, rope, anxiety, duality, conflict, past impression, suffering. And a wise man was passing by, he shouted, Stop shouting. How can each of you be so certain that you are right? Intellect. Higher level of awareness. Intellect is available to us. Wise man was passing by. Stop shouting. How can each of you be so certain that you are right? And then he explained, the elephant is a very large animal. You each one have touched only one part of the animal. Don't fight. Put all the parts together, what each one of you have experienced. You will see the truth. You will see the truth. Let me see each and every part. The body helps me to act, to, to work in the world, but I am not the body. One part. Breath is the second part. Mind is the third part. It is a part. I am not the body. I am not the breath. I am not the mind. I'm not the intellect, I'm not the ego, I'm not the ignorance. Who am I? I'm real self. Any question comes to your mind? Okay, how can you be so sure? Are we seekers of permanent peace, happiness, love, and wisdom? Yes. Do you have a choice to refuse to seek permanent peace, happiness, love, and wisdom? First reason to prove 
to understand clearly. Do you have a choice to leave? Does your mind ever say that, okay, leave that peace, happiness, love, truth, and wisdom? You know, this guy is always talking like this. Do you have a choice? You don't have a choice. No human being has a choice. I don't have a money. I have to survive. Do I have a choice not to work? I must work. So working, in exchange, I get the money to feed myself. Look at it. We don't have a choice. So if I don't have a choice, then I'm ready and capable. I'm ready, make myself capable to treat the path. If I'm not capable, I should continue doing the practice intensively, listen to it, understand it again. Now I did not, my mind has some stress and I, okay, go back, listen to it. Allow the intellect to work on the mind and you will see everything is gone. We should put all the parts together. When the mind has a fear, and you continue to think of a fear, associate it with the past impression, the fifth donkey returns, and then this mind separates you from the peace that is already within you. Like these six blind people, they only perceive the part and they stick to their notion. It's not very deep, but still it is a little higher principle. And I know you are wise, you understand that. So our intellect can understand I'm living at a lower level of self-awareness. So lower self-awareness, the intellect stops, it goes behind, we then fall back. But by default, I'm a human being. I have, I have a choice. I can think of it. I can gain the knowledge. And through the knowledge, I can put into service on the mind. You are doing the practice for a couple of hours. You live in higher level of awareness, including peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. But we know you cannot do the practice 24 hours a day. But what we can do, once we have done the practice, now I'm living in a higher level of awareness and attention, in peace and happiness, So I should carry forward living into that peace and calmness while performing all the activities during the day and what it demands. It demands our awareness and attention. Doing every activity with awareness, attention, 
awareness of the inner calm and the peace. You practiced, you have an experience, or you did not practice, you wake up in the morning, you become aware of that inner calm and the peace. Allow that inner calm and peace in performing all your activities. You will find, the mind will not find a chance to get associated with the tree, with the fake leash. Or it will not start thinking in parts, but it will continue to think as a whole. And that is going to change the behavior. So in our traditional wisdom, we say that the knowledge that is present in the Eastern wisdom is the one most important thing that changes our behavior. Because it changes my perception. It burns down the wrong notion and ideas and the knowledge. And that knowledge is personalized by the teacher. So two things are important. You are listening, learning, you are paying attention in every, every talk. You are learning and listening. And after learning and listening, you close your eyes and start thinking what our masters have taught us. So you have started thinking in your hands. So what happens then? It becomes your knowledge. My friend, it becomes your knowledge. And the moment it becomes your knowledge, it has to change the behavior. It means it has to change the mind. So when the mind changes, it changes your thinking. When it changes your thinking, your attitude changes. When your attitude changes, your perception towards the life also changes. And when the perception towards the life changes, no worries, no fear. What is that perception, the real perception that I'm, the real self full of peace and happiness? Now understand in a different way. And I hope this week in Eastern wisdom, we do not have any place for wrong thinking because the mind, first it claims, I am thinking independently and that independent thinking takes us into a wrong direction inside the mind and it starts thinking of anxiety, duality and conflict even when you have understood that your real self is full of peace, happiness, love and wisdom. What I'm talking, I'm conveying through the thoughts and thoughts Thought contains the knowledge. And thought of an anxiety, fear is also a thought. Do you want the weed should grow and hide all the beautiful plants in your backyard and the front yard? I know, you will say no. Why your mind, when it starts growing the weed, 
why don't you trim them by another group of thoughts did you get it let us understand whether you say weed or you say the beautiful plants that you are growing in your front in the backyard they both are plants whether you say weed or the other plants that you want to keep it don't you make a choice are you not clear <laughs> are you not clear you throw the weeds out and in fact that is <laughs> your profession also don't don't you know you carefully throw all the weeds out weeds are also plants plants that you want to keep here also plants That is the simple thing I'm saying to you. Both are thoughts. One group, second group. Clarity. By learning and listening, they interact. What is clarity I told you? Classifying. Weed. Thanks. Thoughts. Weeds. A fear, insecurity, thoughts of peace, happiness, love, will change your perception. I know you are wise, you are paying attention. I'm repeating it again. Whether you say it's a weed or the plants that you keep in your backyard, and the front, both are plants. Is there any doubt about it? So I have the thoughts of anxiety and thoughts of the peace. Both are thoughts. When we live at a lower level of self-awareness, the mind grows the weeds, intellect hides. And when the intellect is active, take over the mind and the intellect brings in these careful plants or thoughts. That helps to bring about a change in the mind. That changes my perception. That is why we say the mind pushes hard that let me think independently I have been suffering from stress for the last 20 years. Independent thinking. Really? Really? Now, disciplined thinking, following the principles of Eastern wisdom. Be very clear. Continue the practice. And now from the after listening, the moment you heard it, you start changing. Again, see the simple thing. I want to learn landscaping you start guiding and I interrupt you in between I say I think independently and I talk about atom in relation to landscaping they are not at all related but I push on my independent way of thinking I will not get anywhere who does this to mind? Why it does? Because of the past impression. Why it does it? Because of the desire. Why it does it? Because of the fear. Why it does it? Because I feel a sense of incompleteness. We are complete. We are full of real. We are real self. We are permanent peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. How come? Don't you love peace? I know you will say yes. If you say yes, peace is your nature. Do you love stress? No. 
How can the stress be your nature? When it enters into the mind, let the intellect should take over the mind and throw it out. And that is why I say the very first step. So tell me, did you understand what is discernment? Did you understand what is dispassion? Did you understand what are the six treasures like it? If you not, then I will take this in the next session to go a little deeper. What are the six inner wealth in the mind that you are not aware? Are you aware of it? Very good. If you are not, I will take you deeply, followed by the practice. Discernment in the intellect leads to dispassion in the mind. So what happens? You bridge the gap between the knowledge and the behavior. Uh, there might be some frequent triggers in the mind, and that prevents alignment. So that is taken care by the sixth inner wealth of the mind, we, which we all have. If you remember all of them, good. I have picked up these in a different talks and sessions. So only one thing you have understood, very good. You did not understand that too is good. Why? L I will understand it. But why? There is no choice. For what? I'm seeker of peace and happiness. Why there is no choice? Because that is my essential nature. In today's session, I just converted this into a lot of questions. You have to keep these questions in your intellect to find the way to get, even to bring about a total change in your life. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, sarve bhadrani pashyantu, let everyone be happy. Let everyone be healthy. Let everyone be blessed. Let none suffer from miseries in the world. Mm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.